Sign Yun. My name is David Peterson, and this is the Art of Language Invention. Episode 29, Assimilation and Dissimilation. All right, so uh, assimilation and dissimilation are very similar things. Uh, we're going to start with assimilation, which is essentially one thing becoming more like the thing next to it. Very simple. Uh, probably the most common example of assimilation, I think, in spoken language is anticipatory nasal assimilation or also uh, just nasal assimilation in general. It's essentially when you have a sequence like N, uh, an N followed by a P becoming an M followed by a P. So an N is, uh, for example, nasal. A uh, coronal and a stop, also voiced. The P that you see in both segments there is oral, bilabial, and a stop and not voiced. And so what happens is that in this sequence, the first element becomes a little bit more like the second element. And so uh, even it's still nasal, it's still a stop, it's still voiced, but it moves from coronal to bilabial to be more like the thing that is next to it. Uh, biologically, you can look at it this way. The various organs in your mouth and in your throat are in this state. Uh, in state one, the tongue is at the alveolar ridge to form the N. Uh, the lips are spread, of course. The vocal folds are vibrating to give the voice for the N. And the velum is lowered, allowing air to pass from your lungs out through your nose. State two, what it is aiming for, for the P, uh, the tongue is loose, where it is, it doesn't matter. The lips are pursed now. Uh, the vocal folds are still, uh, so in other words, the segment is not voiced, and the velum is raised. So um, pretty much it's going from one state where everything is different to an entirely different state. And so what it's doing is saying it's anticipating state two and saying, why don't we just, say, make some of these things a little bit more similar. So the tongue is now loops, loose and the lips are pursed. Everything else is the same, and that gives you an M instead of an N. Uh, now, does that mean that you couldn't have a potential language like uh, this one, where anpa with an N means mushroom, and ampa is a verb that means to spread? No, of course you could. This is entirely possible in a natural language or in a conlang. Um, it's not as usual, though. Uh, this is actually more of a usual situation. Say that you had a word like anpa with an N, that means mushroom, and there simply doesn't happen to be a word like ampa. It's just not a word in the language. What happens then? Uh, you have speaker A says something like anpa with an N. Speaker B hears ampa. And say speaker C st uh, uh, just starts saying ampa for whatever reason. And basically there's no miscommunication, there's no misunderstanding because there's no other word right? There's only the one word. And so it isn't really important whether you say an N or an M. And so people mishear M, they repeat M, and so on. Uh, assimilation can go the other way. So for example, in Finnish, you have these nominative forms, uh, sampo, which is a key uh, thing in the Kalevala, uh, Skotlanti, which is how Scotland comes out in Finnish, and Helsinki, the capital of Finland. This is the nominative case. In the inessive case, uh, you add a sa kind of suffix, There's um, and then there's a little bit of a change. So sampo becomes sammossa, skotlanti becomes skotlannissa, and helsinki becomes helsingissa, where that ng, this is orthography for Finnish, that ng is actually a geminate velar nasal. Uh, and so what happens is basically the way I like to think of it is uh, you're building up for a syllable that has a coda. And so you make the previous one a little bit more simple by having these uh, stops, these voiceless stops, just becoming geminates. Now, dissimilation, very similar. It's just one thing becoming less like the thing next to it. Uh, so uh, an example of assimilation in Italian, you have September of the noun in English, but it's also, that's the way it was in Latin as well, September. Uh, in Italian, it comes out as settembre. In other words, the P uh, changed to become more like the T next to it, and so it became a geminate. Instead of September, it's settembre. You can imagine an alternative version of Italian where instead of it becoming more the same, it became more different. 
So instead of September or Settembre, it becomes Septembre. That would be dissimilation. The thing becomes even more different from the thing next to it. Uh, and you might wonder, well, does that really happen? In fact, it does. In fact, with that same word, if you look at September borrowed into Russian, and this is the case with a lot, but not all of the Slavic languages, uh, September in Russian is, uh, uh, goodness gracious, it's been a while, Sientyabr, uh, right? And so what's happened is that the P has become an N. This is actually a case of assimilation and dissimilation. The dissimilation is that the stop became a nasal, even more different from the thing next to it. The assimilation is that it went from labial to coronal, otherwise you would have expected an M there, a Sientyabr. Instead, it's Sientyabr. All right. Another nice example is these words from Latin. These are all adjectives or were at some point. You have this al suffix for adjectives, giving you words like moral or pastoral or um, floral, for example. Any time the previous consonant was an l, though, the l of that suffix changed to an r. In other words, instead of molal or solal, it became molar and solar. It's a dissimilation. It's a little bit more distant, but it's a dissimilation basically to make things a little bit easier to say or just a bit more euphonious. Uh, essentially, assimilation and dissimilation are really the same thing. Both of them are identifying that this environment results in a phonologically infelicitous sequence, uh, and what that means is entirely language dependent. What is phonologically infelicitous in one language won't necessarily be in another language. The assimilation answer to this is, well, we might as well make them uh, sound more the same since that's what they sound like anyway. Dissimilation, on the other hand, says better make them sound even more different so everyone knows that they're supposed to be different. They're basically two answers to the same problem. So anyway, that's it for this episode. You might have realized that there's been, I don't know, 10 or so years in between this episode and the last episode. I don't even remember at this point. Uh, but it really was my intention to only do this occasionally anyway. So if, you, if there's some topic that you would love to have me do an episode on, you can still email me at uh, djpquery at gmail.com. Otherwise, um, I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you later.